welcome to a live story time with our friend Eddie. Eddie says lots of our friends haven't subscribed to our channel. So if you like listening to our stories, please click the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any more. Good reminder, Eddie. Today's story has got two criminals that don't want to do very good things, but luckily there's a tiny little ladybird that has very good listening ears. So let's get our wiggles out so that we can start reading. One, two, three. I wiggle my fingers and I wiggle my toes. I wiggle my ears and I wiggle my nose. Now there are no more wiggles in me. I can sit as quiet as can be. Today's story is called What the Ladybird Heard on Holiday. So you might remember what the ladybird heard. Now this one happens on holiday. Can you spot the two criminals on the front cover? Our author is Julia Donaldson and our illustrator is Lydia Monks. Here's our book spine and our back cover has some pictures and it says on the blurb, Hefty Hugh and Lanky Lynn are planning to kidnap Monkey Joe from the zoo. <gasps> but they don't know that the clever little ladybird is on holiday in the same city and she isn't going to let them get away with it. <laughs> what the ladybird heard on holiday. Let's see what the ladybird's going to do. One fine day in the middle of May, the ladybird went on holiday. She flew to the town to see the sights, the streets and the shops, and the bright, bright lights. She saw the parks and the palace too. Then she flew to visit the zoo. And the crocodile snapped, the tiger growled, the lion roared, and the monkeys howled. The elephant trumpeted, trump, trump, trump. Humph, said the camel with a great big hump. The hyena laughed and the hummingbird whirred, but the ladybird said never a word. But the ladybird saw and the ladybird heard. She saw two men she already knew. They were Lanky Len and Hefty Hugh. And she heard them chuckle, ho, 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 we're going to kidnap Monkey Joe. We'll hide till there's no one else about. Then we'll pick the lock and we'll get Joe out. And if we give him lots of fruit, he'll do the job and he'll get the loot. The palace isn't far at all. Monkey Joe can scale the wall. He'll find out where the queen's asleep. Then tiptoe into her room, he'll creep. He'll open the sack and steal the crown. We'll soon be the richest men in town. Oh no, I wonder if the monkey will do that. The little spotty ladybird told the animals what she heard. And the crocodile snapped and the tiger growled. The lion roared and the monkey howled. The elephant trumpeted, trump, trump, trump. Humph, said the camel with a great big hump. The hyena cried and the hummingbird whirred. And all of the animals, feathered and furred, said, no, no, no. No, 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 we can't let them kidnap Monkey Joe. But the ladybird had a good idea and she whispered it into Monkey's ear. I wonder what she said. Then straight away, the ladybird flew to the palace and had a word with the queen's two corgis, Willow, and Holly. And one said, gosh, and the other said, golly. And both the dogs agreed to do just what the ladybird told them to. At 
dead of night, the two bad men, Hefty Hugh and Lanky Ling, checked that there was no one else about. Then they picked the lock and they got Joe out. They carried him off to the palace gate, gave him a sack, then lay in wait. They watched him scale the palace wall and they muttered, careful not to fall. Then they rubbed their hands as they saw him creeping into the room where the queen lay sleeping. Corgi Holly and Corgi Willow, who lay each side of the queen's soft pillow, were wide awake and they said to Joe, Come on, monkey, off we go. Then they led the way while the queen still slept and they showed young Joe where their bones were kept. Then they helped the monkey fill the sack and they wagged their tails as he carried it back. Oh, so they're filling the sack with bones. Good idea. Oh, the two thieves yelled, hip, hip, hooray. But now let's make our getaway. They carried the sack to a nice quiet park where the only sound was a distant bark. They found a bench and both sat down and Hugh said, time to see that crown. I just can't wait, said Lanky Len. They opened up the sack. But then, you should have heard their moans and their groans to find that the sack was full of bones. Just then, a dog came bounding up and Hugh said, shoo, you greedy pup. Another dog was close behind and then came dogs of every kind. A lurker and a Labrador, a peak, a pug, and then more and more. Black dogs, white dogs, grey and brown. It seemed like every dog in town. They seized the bones and gnashed and gnawed, and tugged and tussled, pulled and clawed. They turned upon the robbers, yapping. How about a second helping? The thieves took off with leaps and bounds pursued by all the hungry hounds, while the monkey ran and the ladybird flew with never a stop till they reached the zoo. Then the crocodile grinned and the tiger pranced, the lion leapt and the monkeys danced, the elephant trumpeted, trump, trump, trump. Hooray, said the camel with a great big hump. The hyena laughed and the hummingbird whirred, but, the ladybird said never a word. What a lovely story. Thank goodness for that ladybird listening so well to everybody. If you like that story, please click the thumbs up button and send it to a friend.